We are so looking forward to getting back to playing music together, aren't we? Schools are back and there's so much to do, but I think it's so important if we can to get bands and ensembles up and running again. Some young people haven't played with another instrumentalist for over a year and some have never played in a group or ensemble or even a duet before. So this is, this is important. We know that so lots of the joys and benefits of music making come, come from playing with other people. It's okay to play in your bedroom on your own, but, but music really comes to life when you play in a group with other people. It's been shown too in studies that young people that um, uh, play an instrument are more likely to continue if they play in an ensemble or band. So how do we get back to this? It's going to seem strange, isn't it? A hard mountain to climb. It's going to be just like starting again. We need to build confidence again, motivation, enthusiasm, and we've got to succeed in making the young people want to come back and do it and want to play in groups again and make them feel as if it's an exciting, life-affirming thing to do. So, when we get the groups together, I think it's important um, to make it a social experience where they'll come and meet their friends, but also important to choose the material. It's got to be um, something good that we choose to play and the way that we play it. It's got to be something that's non-threatening, something that's given, going to give them a positive feeling, not a negative feeling. And it's going to be something that's achievable, that's going to make them want to come back and not feel as if, oh no, that's, that's something I can't do. We've got to make them feel as if it's something they really can do. And we've got to make them want to keep coming back and keep coming back and playing so we can get our groups back like they were before. I'll talk a bit about nurturing younger and beginner ensembles. To start with, when you meet up, you don't have to play written music at all. It doesn't have to be about that. It's about enjoying playing music together. You can even start with just playing a music game, like passing a, a note around a circle or passing a beat around a circle or playing rhythms together. You can perhaps make up a chord with a group and, and, and play it together. It doesn't even have to be a nice chord. It's just about making sounds together and listening. And you can also perhaps think of a story that you can illustrate with your sounds that you're making. Perhaps um, a walk through a spooky wood or a, um, the day in the life of a caterpillar or something that, that, um, that can give you lots of ideas for different sounds. Another way of starting an ensemble is to perhaps learn a piece all together by ear and then maybe learn a round. If you learn a round and then play it at intervals, all of a sudden you've got three and four part ensembles and this, this starts to feel good then and it also encourages your players to listen to each other. Um, another way of making ensembles is to, to build up ostinatos, layers. Um, perhaps start with a bass line and then add other parts um, on top. And this can be done by using the good old pentatonic scale, notes one, two, three, five, six of a scale, all harmonized together. And when they're played on top of each other in, in patterns and, and in rhythms, they all sound very nice. Um, also modes can be used the same way. The Dorian mode can be used in a very similar way. The difficulty comes when you have beginner mixed ensembles because although they only knew a few notes, um, instruments do learn in different keys. So it's very hard putting them all together. You can arrange things yourself for beginner ensemble, but sometimes this can be more complicated than it seems and also very time consuming and teachers don't have much time do they at the moment. Okay, so there, there is music out there that you can get for these mixed ensembles, but for a starter, you can download something free from the Music for Youth website. A few years ago, I wrote a piece called Jigsaw Jam for any instrument that you can possibly imagine, but just using the first few notes that they learn. And I did do a lot of research to, to do this. So the piece, Jigsaw Jam, is written in sections like a jigsaw and can be fitted together. So there are 
pieces of the jigsaw for all the sections of the orchestra, strings, percussion, um, woodwind, brass, there's pitch percussion, there's guitar parts, there are ukulele groups, there are um, sections for harmonica, recorder, anything you can imagine. So then there's a big piece called the sky, which is written for everything. And any instrument can play in this piece, the sky, as long as you know what key they play in. There's parts for all kinds of unusual instruments, including mini bassoons to melodicas, anything. And so all you need to do is to Google Jigsaw Jam by Sarah Watts, and it will take you straight to the Music for Youth website, where you can download all the parts, all the music, you can download backing tracks for everything, and then it also leads you to a YouTube link where you can actually listen to all this and um, hear the music and hear how, how it was meant to sound um, and how you can put these pieces together. So actually, it's a good thing to do because you can um, rehearse these pieces, then you can put them into one great big performance where everybody can play together. And they're all in the same key, so they link really well. And so I hope um, this helps you in getting back to making music together. And um, Music Flute Youth would love to hear any um, recordings that you've done of these beginner ensembles. Um, be lovely to hear any, any recordings of Jigsaw Jam. So we hope it goes really well and we hope this has helped.